Welcome to your audio program, How to Stand Out from the Crowd, 99 Tips for Successful and Powerful Presenting. I don't think too many people will argue with the supposition that being able to communicate well and effectively is one of the most important skills in life, and one of the most important contexts, and often one of the most testing, when we communicate is when we give a presentation, either internally or to clients or potential clients, or existing clients. I'd like you to cast your mind back, if you will, over the last few months, and just remember some of the presentations that you've experienced, being on the receiving end of. Now, some of them will doubtless have been brilliant, inspiring, motivational, fluent, and others will probably have been mind-numbingly awful, that you just wanted to crawl out of the table with embarrassment to get away from it all. Now, what's the difference between the two? What makes a good one or a bad one? The bad news is there's no one way of making a presentation, which is actually the good news too. Uh, it would be very boring if we're all the same. But what we're going to be looking at here in this audio program is the difference that makes a difference between being pretty ordinary and really outstanding. I've written these 99 tips in such a way that if you apply them, and even a small proportion of them, it will have a dramatic effect on the power of your presentations and your ability to win business and also stand out from your peers and your competition. Now, I think it only good manners if I introduce myself. Um, first thing to tell you is that I am not an actor. And why should that be important? Well, many of the people in this profession, in this business, teaching presentations, are actors or actresses. And many of them are superb. And I have a huge respect for the acting profession. It's one of the bravest jobs you can do. However, I have a personal philosophy that there's enough going on up there when you're making a presentation, just being yourself and coping with things rather than trying to be somebody else. That's just my philosophy. And my background is I did five years in the army, uh, followed by two years in an investment bank, followed by six years with Procter & Gamble before I started doing this full time. If you want to know any more about my clients or what I do or how I operate, you can go to my site, www presentationskillscoaching.co.uk and you should learn what you need to learn. Right, let's get started. A few years ago, Time magazine surveyed its readership and one of the questions they asked them was, what are your biggest fears on earth? Well, you probably know what's coming, but third from the top of the list was fear of spiders and bugs and creepy crawlies. Second from the on the top of the list was fear of heights and flying. And Top of the list by a large margin was fear of standing up and speaking in front of other people. Death, apparently, was number seven on this list. <laughs> and this is in America, not exactly the land of the shy and retiring. Now, some of you listening to this will be listening because you're keen to raise your game in this vital area of presenting. And others of you will be listening it just to pick up the odd tip, the odd gem. That's fine just to fine-tune your existing excellent standard. Uh, you're all welcome. Now, if you think about it, our response to making presentations varies hugely, but it'd be fair to say that it's very rarely top of people's lists of favourite things to do. And many of us go to extraordinary lengths to avoid having to make a presentation. Now, why is this so? Now, for some of you listening to this, what I'm about to say will make no sense at all. The remainder will recognise it in varying degrees, and the reason is fear. But what sort of fear? Fear of failure. The fear of failure through ridicule, being made to look stupid, bumbling, being unprofessional, being embarrassed, that our nerves will show, that our voice will crack and sweat will pour down our features, and surely everyone will be judging us in a very critical and negative manner. Now, you would expect me to be biased, but being able to present coherently and naturally and to engage with any audience is a vital skill. And failing to do so damages promotion prospects in most organisations, loses you both existing and potential clients, gives woolly, confusing messages, demotivates staff, and in many cases, does your self-esteem no favours. Now, getting most of it right can go a very long way to winning business, getting your ideas accepted, 
building trust and faith in you and improving others' perceptions of you, both personally and professionally. Now, is there one way of doing it? A foolproof magic pill or a method? Frankly, there isn't. We are all of us unique, with our own personalities and style, and thank God it is like that. And I would always encourage you to let your natural style, the real you, come out to play. But it will normally only feel safe to come out and play if you feel you have the tools and the technique to do justice both to yourself and the subject you are talking about. And that's what this audio programme is about. It's a distillation of the most useful techniques and attitudes that I've learned from my clients and I've been teaching for over 20 years. And I'm glad to say they all work. They work time and time again in an almost every presentational context. So I would earnestly encourage you to try them for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Try them for yourself and experience the difference that even just a few of them can make. And to use that phrase again, it really can be the difference that makes a difference. To find out more about Michael Trigg, his track record and his work, do go to www.presentationskillscoaching.co.uk. Thank you. Thank you.